As someone that's been doing a bit more standardizing with the Revo ecosystem, I was super excited to see MicroSwiss announce the NG Revo at Earth last year. Being able to quickly swap my library of nozzles between different printers and tool heads is a major convenience. There are currently two NG Revo versions. One is for CR10 and Ender 3 variants, and the other is for the Ender 5 family. There are also adapter plates available to use them with linear rail upgrades. MicroSwiss reached out with interest in sponsoring an install video for their Ender 3 NG Revo kit, which is what we're going to be doing today. In this video, we will convert the stock Ender 3 V2 to the NG Revo toolhead combo. We'll go step by step through the installation process and finish up by updating our e steps and running a print. So, with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Before we do anything else, let's first get the box open and take a look at what's included with this kit. Inside the box, you'll find the extruder extension cable, which is needed to convert the printer from its Bowden to direct drive extruder, a bag of hardware containing the fan screws, butt splice connectors, and PTFE retention clips, another bag containing all of the M5 hardware that you're going to need for your new X carriage, some zip ties for cable management, and the main event itself, the Micro Swiss NG Revo. For tools, you're going to need a set of pliers for those butt splice connectors, a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the old fan shroud, a good set of Allen keys or metric drivers, some flush cutters to remove your old zip ties, an 8 and 10 millimeter spanner wrench, and lastly, a utility knife or some scissors. Before we start disassembling our old tool head, make sure that your printer is powered off. Since the NG Revo is slightly longer than our stock tool head, we need to tighten our bed screws to drop the bed a little bit lower. Another thing you may want to do, which I ended up doing, is raising your Z end stop so that way it triggers a little bit sooner. Now we can begin the disassembly process. To start, take your Phillips head screwdriver and remove the two screws on the back of the X carriage that are holding the fan cover in place. Then use your flush cutters to remove all of the zip ties that are installed on the tool head's wire harness. With those two screws out and the zip ties removed, you can wiggle the front cover back and forth to get it off of the X carriage plate. The NG Revo is going to be using both this hot end and layer cooling fan, so we need to remove all the screws holding them in place. For the hot end fan, there are two Phillips screws you'll need to remove, and for the layer cooling fan, there is just a single screw underneath the hot end fan that is holding it inside of that housing. With those three screws removed, you can pull both fans out. The layer cooling fan does have a small fan shroud on it, so you'll need to use a small Phillips head screwdriver to remove those two screws. Moving on to the hot end, start by using your finger to pull out the retention clip that's holding that Bowden tube in place. Then push down on the Bowden collet with one hand and use your other hand to pull the PTFE tube out of the hot end. Then take a 2mm Allen wrench and use that to remove the two screws holding the hot end into that X carriage plate. At this point, all of our electronics from the stock tool head are detached from the X carriage plate, so we can just take them and move them off to the side for now. The next thing we need to remove is our stock extruder. Start by unplugging the extruder's stepper motor cable. Then, just like with the hot end, remove the retention clip and press down on the Bowden collet to pull out that PTFE tube. Start by removing the extruder's tension screw. With that out of the way, you can pull on the spring to pop it off of the extruder, releasing the tension. From here, there are three visible screws and one under the extruder arm that we'll need to remove. When you get down to the last screw, make sure you're using your other hand to hold the stepper motor so that it doesn't fall off the printer. None of the parts from the stock extruder will be used on the NG Revo. Next, grab the NG Revo and remove the pre-installed fan shroud. To do this, you'll need to remove two screws, one located on the top right and one located on the bottom left of that shroud. Be careful not to lose the two screws because we will need them when we go to reinstall the shroud. At this point, I like to take a second and just look at the machining on the NG extruder. It is just an absolutely gorgeous extruder body, and this is really the only time you're going to see all of that aluminum underneath the fan shroud. Next up, it's time to connect the Revo heater and Revo thermistor wires to the stock heater and stock thermistor wires of our printer. 
Start by cutting the thermistor and heater cartridge wires from the stock hot end. Make sure you do this close to the hot end so that way you have enough wire when you go to connect this to the NG Revo. The Revo ships with two pin Microfit 3.0 connectors, so there's a few options on how you can attach this to your existing wires. Before cutting off the existing plugs, if you do feel comfortable crimping and you have Microfit connectors, you can easily crimp these connectors onto your existing wires and then just plug and unplug the wires as needed. For me, I don't really like the bulkiness of the Microfit connectors, so I'm going to cut off those plugs. The next option you have is to go with the butt splice connectors included with the Micro Swiss kit. If you don't feel comfortable crimping and you don't feel comfortable soldering, then this is a fantastic option. To use them, insert one wire from each of the wires you're wanting to make a connection into the butt splice connector, making sure it's pushed all the way to the very back. The back side of these connectors are fairly clear, so you can see and make sure that they're pushed all the way in and then grab your pliers and squeeze the yellow button until the bottom is pressed all the way. When you do that, some of the silicone gel inside of the connectors will likely be forced out of the connector, which is expected, and you can just wipe away any of the excess. The only real downside of the butt splice connectors is just like the Microfit that they are fairly bulky. In my case, what I ended up doing was stripping all of the wires on the Revo side and stripping all of the wires on the old hot end side and just soldering them together. I loaded up some heat shrink tubing so that way I could cover them after and took out my soldering iron and twisted the wires and soldered them together. There really isn't a right or wrong way of doing this. It's just whatever is going to be convenient for you and whatever method you feel the most comfortable doing. The key thing is that at this point, regardless of the method you chose, you should have your NG Revo's heater wires and thermistor wires connected to your existing heater and thermistor wires. The next step is to remove the stock X carriage plate. To do this, start by loosening the tension on your X axis belt and then unhook both of the belts from the X carriage. Now we need to remove the roller wheels from the stock X carriage. These are held in place using three screws and nylon lock nuts. To remove them, grab a 3mm Allen wrench and an 8mm spanner wrench. Fit the 8mm spanner wrench over the nylon lock nut to hold it in place, and then use the 3mm Allen wrench to remove the screw. The only part of this that we will be reusing are those roller wheels, so make sure that you hold on to them. Once you've got the first wheel off, remove the other two and put them off to the side so that we can reinstall them in just a moment. To install the new wheels onto the NG Revo, we'll be using the bag of included M5 hardware. Start by taking the longer bolt, the eccentric nut, the nylon lock nut, and the M5 washer. Fit the longer screw through one of those roller wheels, and then fit the eccentric nut onto that screw. Make sure that you have it facing the right direction, the longer boss or post should be facing away from that roller wheel. With the back of the NG Revo facing towards you, slide the longer screw through the opening in the bottom middle. On the other side, take the M5 washer and place it on the screw, and then take the M5 nut and thread it on a couple of turns. Just like a moment ago when we removed the wheels, we'll use the same 3mm Allen wrench and 8mm spanner wrench to secure the new wheel to the extruder body. Make sure that the orientation of that bottom wheel matches what you see on screen. Now take the other smaller screws and preload one of the roller wheels onto each of them. Grabbing the NG extruder and the fans, make sure that you pull all of the wires over the X-axis extrusion. Then align the bottom wheel that we installed on the NG extruder to the bottom of that X extrusion. Holding the extruder body in place with one hand, grab one of those roller wheels that we preloaded and install it into one of the top threaded holes. In my case, I had to hold the extruder body at an angle to get both wheels on, so we'll need to adjust the eccentric nut on the bottom wheel. Using your 10mm spanner wrench, adjust the eccentric nut on the bottom wheel until the two top wheels are able to move freely back and forth on the very top of the x-axis extrusion. Now that the wheels are in place and the extruder body is vertical, finish tightening those two top roller wheels. Since we loosened the eccentric nut on that bottom wheel, we will have some play in our extruder. Taking the 10mm spanner wrench, we will do the exact opposite of what we just did. My recommendation is to wiggle the extruder body back and forth while you make slight adjustments to that eccentric nut, and once the wobble is gone, the eccentric nut has been tightened correctly. Now we can reinstall our old belt onto the new X carriage. If you're having a hard time getting the belt into the innermost slot, loosening the belt tension a bit can help here. 
With the belt back on, make sure that you retension your x-axis. Next it's time to attach our fans to the NG Revo's fan shroud. For this we'll be using the plastic self-tapping screws included with the Micro Swiss kit. The hot end fan will be going on the front of the shroud and make sure that the wires are coming out the top right. For this fan we'll be using the larger of the self-tapping screws and a Phillips head screwdriver to secure these to the fan shroud. Since we are threading directly into plastic, make sure that you don't over tighten it, simply hand tight is going to be plenty. Then take the layer cooling fan with the opening facing downward and slide it into the slot on the right hand side. Using the four smaller self tapping screws, secure this to the fan shroud. Just like with the larger ones again, you want it nice and snug but there's no need to torque down on these. Now we can reinstall the fan shroud back onto the NG Revo. To keep the wires as neat as possible, I recommend grabbing them all and pulling them into the inside of the fan shroud. Then secure the shroud in place using the two screws that were previously installed. One is located on the top right side of the shroud and the other one is on the left side underneath the stepper motor. Take your existing Bowden tube and an X-Acto knife and cut off around 2.5 inches of that PTFE tube. This will be used as a filament guide into the extruder. Insert that short piece of PTFE tube into the top of the NG extruder. Then take one of the red printed retention clips that were included with the kit and slide it underneath the Bowden collet lip. Next, take the included extruder extension cable and connect the one end into your old extruder cable and the other end into the stepper motor on the NG Revo. Make sure you use the included cable because it does change the pinout and not using this cable or wiring when incorrectly can damage the motor. Moving on to cable management, make sure you give the stepper motor some slack. Micro Swiss recommends creating a little U or loop like this just to prevent any accidental tugging on that extruder cable. Using the included zip ties, secure the stepper motor cable to the existing wiring harness. I like to take a couple of zip ties and secure the wire harness to where the old extruder was. This just helps to keep the wires up and out of the way and prevent them from dragging on the build plate. Make sure to leave your tool head with enough slack so that it can travel to the min and max of your x-axis. Since we switched the location of the extruder, you may want to flip your spool holder 180 degrees so that it's facing towards the front of the printer. You can adjust the gear tension on the extruder by rotating the brass knob. For standard stiff filaments, Micro Swiss recommends having 1.75 millimeters of threads exposed on that brass knob, which in my experience has been the standard way that they ship these extruders, but you can quickly grab a piece of 1.75 millimeter filament and confirm that it is set correctly. Because the NG Revo's extruder has a different gear ratio than the printer's stock extruder, we need to update its e-steps. Luckily, this is a really simple process. Take your printer's micro SD card and plug it into your computer. Then navigate over to MicroSwiss's website and in the NG Revo documentation, there is a download link for the needed G code file that I'll have linked in the description of this video. Download that file to your desktop and then drag it onto your printer's micro SD card. Then take that micro SD card, plug it back into your printer, then navigate to your printer's print menu and select that G code file on the micro SD card to print it, or in this case, process it. It will only take a few seconds for this to complete, and when it's done, your e-steps will have been updated successfully. Next, home the printer, and if you adjusted your bed previously, take a piece of paper and go through the leveling process again. If your printer has automatic bed leveling, then you'll just need to adjust your Z offset. Since the Revo is a completely different hot end with a different heating element than the stock hot end, we'll need to run a PID tune. This is beyond the scope of this video, but E3D has a step-by-step -step guide on how to do this with Marlin firmware and the Revo, which is very simple to follow, that I'll have linked in the description down below. The last thing that you'll need to do is go into your slicer and update the retraction length or retraction distance. The default in Prusa slicer was 6mm and Micro Swiss recommends a 1mm retraction for the NG extruder. Now you're ready to slice up your first model, send it over to your printer and enjoy your newly installed NG Revo. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you are up and running with your NG Revo or at least have a much better understanding of the installation process. I'm really looking forward to throwing an obsidian nozzle on here and doing some abrasive printing. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. As always, if I don't have the answer to your question, I have no problem reaching out directly to Microswiss to try to get those answers for you. 
On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Diana from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.